As a kid, I played a lot of games, but my favourite franchise was always Pokemon. For those of you that don't know what Pokemon are, they're essentially fictional creatures that the player captures and then uses to battle against other Pokemon. And how do I put this? They're not very well thought through. Some can move mountains with one arm, others operate at the surface temperature of the sun, and many can even cause natural disasters at will. But none piqued my interest quite as much as Gardevoir. Now, not only can Gardevoir literally see into the future, but I quote, To protect its trainer, it will expend all its psychic power to create a small black hole. I thought this would be really cool if that happened, but also I was like 12 years old and still protected by a cloud of innocence, and I had no idea about the destruction this would unleash on the world. But now, I feel like I'm ready to answer the question of what would happen. But this whole analysis really hinges on one word in this description, and that is small. What exactly is small? And after much thought and deliberation, I decided to split this video into three sections, where we cover three different types of small. First, small compared to other black holes in the universe. Then, we'd look at black holes that look small compared to objects you might see. And finally, a black hole that isn't very heavy. Let's start with the first section, relatively small. Now, the largest black hole we've ever discovered is Tun 618, at a very impressive 4 times 10 to the 10 solar masses. That's over 40 billion times the mass of the Sun, where the M with a circle subscript just means the mass of our Sun. Intermediate mass black holes range between 100 and 10,000 solar masses, and the smallest black hole discovered is a little harder to pinpoint, but it's believed to be the very creatively named GRO J0422 plus 32 with a mass about four times the mass of our sun. Now, we're looking for something that's not the smallest, but just small. So let's take 50 times the mass of the sun for our black hole. The Schwarzschild radius of a black hole defines its event horizon, which is the point after which even light can't escape the black hole's gravity. Crunching through the maths, we can get a nice formula for the radius of our black hole. For our 50 solar mass black hole, it comes out as about 150 kilometers. If we were to center the black hole around London, that would change the map of southern England from this into this. As you can see, there's a fair bit that just gets immediately absorbed by the black hole. We know the force the black hole exerts on the rest of the Earth, so we can derive this fairly ugly expression for the time taken to fall into the black hole. This shows us that the other end of the Earth would fall into the black hole in just over half a second. But it's in the afterlife where we get to watch the real fun unfold. Because in the blink of an eye, we've just replaced the Earth with something weighing 50 times the mass of the Sun. Meaning now, this black hole contains most of the mass of the solar system, and everything is suddenly found orbiting it. So what happens? Well, in order to answer this question, I created some code in MATLAB to calculate orbits. I found data for the positions and velocities of all the planets from NASA, put them into the program, and here, are the results. Mercury begins a new highly elliptical orbit around the black hole. Venus suffers the same fate, and Mars does a quick flyby and then is promptly ejected from the solar system. Jupiter joins the elliptical orbit gang, and Saturn kind of does as well, though its orbit is not as changed. Uranus orbits very close to the black hole, well, relatively close, and Neptune's orbit is interesting, but probably the least changed of the new orbits. The final body that's going to be orbiting our black hole, which we haven't considered, is the Sun. This has the most interesting orbit path of them all, doing a few quick flybys of the black hole before promptly joining Mars and exiting the solar system. So, in short, the solar system would still be around, it would just be a bit cold and dead. Okay, but what if the black hole looked small? Let's say it's the size of your fingernail and see what happens. We can reuse the equation for the radius of a black hole we found earlier, but we flip it to work out the mass of the black hole instead. We see our tiny black hole, roughly the size of your fingernail, would have a mass about that of the Earth. And this is a problem, because while your body is used to the gravitational pull of the Earth, it's not used to having it so close. But it's not the force that's going to kill you, it's the difference between the force at the front and back of your body. In order to explain, let's create this black hole 5 meters away. Let's take an average 80 kilogram human and apply the force formula. Taking the average well, depth of a human as 20 centimeters, 
we get a force difference of 10 to the 40 newtons between the front and back of your body. If we model the front of a human as a rectangle, we obtain the average area of a human, which allows us to find the stress at a whopping 160 terapascals trying to rip your body into pieces. To put that into perspective, here are the ultimate tensile stresses of some common materials. Now, the ultimate tensile stress is the stress a material can withstand before it breaks. The strongest material humans have created is the carbon nanotube. The theoretical version of it is the strongest material humans have ever thought of, and it wouldn't even stand a chance. Everyone and everything around would be ripped to shreds and consumed. What happens after is a little harder to determine. As the black hole has roughly the mass of the Earth, they would fall towards their center of mass, with the black hole consuming the matter around it as it went. Then the black hole would either take its place inside the new Earth, or depending on the structural integrity of a hollow Earth, it would consume it entirely. All right, the last two examples were a bit world-ending. So let's make our black hole even smaller. Let's make it with the mass of, say, a uh, football. It's not the lightest thing in the world, but it's a good one for imagining what the mass of this thing would be. A standard football weighs about 430 grams, which would give us a black hole radius of 6 times 10 to the minus 28 meters. That is truly minuscule. The radius of an atom is on the order of 10 to the minus 10. A proton comes in at 10 to the minus 15. In fact, we're not too far from the Planck length, which is the smallest length we work on in physics, at 10 to the minus 35 meters. This black hole is so tiny that it would experience a very strong effect of something called Hawking radiation. In order to explain Hawking radiation, I've prepared some empty space here for you. Now, this space may look empty to you and me, but Stephen Hawking proposed that this space is not truly empty, but is full of particle-antiparticle pairs that are created, move apart, and then annihilate. In any ordinary setting, this effect is too small to do anything. But if we look at this effect at the event horizon of a black hole, we see that one of the particles falls in and the other escapes. This escaping particle is called the Hawking radiation, and it causes the black hole to lose mass over time. Hawking then did the math for this situation and created a formula for the time taken for a black hole to completely evaporate all its mass by this effect. For our black hole, this works out as 7 times 10 to the minus 18 seconds. That is almost instant. And in this time, a football's worth of mass has been converted to energy in the form of radiation. And this energy has to go somewhere. Though it may not seem like a lot, 430 grams is the equivalent of 9 megatons of TNT. To put that into perspective, the explosion from this would be 250 times bigger than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. Ivy King is the strongest pure fission device ever tested, at half a megaton. The first fusion device, Ivy Mike, is not too far off our yield at 10.4 megatons. And the Tsar Bomba, biggest nuclear device ever tested, which actually had a 100 megaton theoretical yield, but they had to scale it down to 50 megatons for testing. That only has five times as much energy as our black hole explosion. Now, this puts things into perspective compared to other nuclear devices, but what would the actual destruction look like? Well, luckily, there's a tool on the internet called NukeMap that allows you to simulate dropping a nuclear weapon anywhere in the world. Now, we will model our black hole explosion as a nuclear weapon explosion, because it's the closest thing we have for something of that destructive capability. And the tool shows us that we would have two million deaths and two and a half million injuries if we dropped it in the center of London. That is a lot for a football, and the whole of London will be destroyed by the blast and the shockwave it produces. But as an experimentalist, I don't really trust these simulations, so I thought I'd crush a football into a black hole to demonstrate its destructive power. So, what have we learned? Well, we looked through three different sizes of black holes, and how their size means they affect the world in different ways. The first swallowed the Earth whole and took its place at the center of the solar system. The second tore everything to shreds and removed all life on Earth. And the third turned into a weapon of mass destruction. I think 
to summarize, it's a good thing Pokemon don't exist. Because no matter the size of the black hole, you would die.